How's it going, Scrub Gamers? Welcome back to a Never Deck Profile here at Scrub Games, joined by me, Jamie. So, if you were paying attention to my Facebook or anything like that, or um, watched the last video I did about the expectations for my channel for 2022, you would have seen that I was streaming on yesterday on Twitch of the new Green Beers deck in the lead, because it was it's something that interested me from it. Like... I like the Beerus leads. I red was the best one before we got a third one, and the green Beerus one seemed interesting. Like I was hyped seeing that we had getting a new Beerus lead, and we saw the then we saw the effect. I know a lot of people were put off it because the life total and stuff that it starts off with, but I thought that was quite interesting because it does make up for that with the stats and it's very flavorful as well. And if you don't know what I mean by flavorful, if you look at the life totals for both Champ and Beerus. They but they they both have the life equal to the number of um, fighters they brought in during the Champa saga when it's at the Universe Six versus Universe Seven tournament. And the makeup for that, they're both like the fifty is fifteen k on the front and twenty k on the back, which is quite cool. So uh, do a bit of testing, test out my initial list, and if you want do want to check out my testing, you can just watch it on the VOD on Twitch if you want to. Um, but I'm gonna go over the list with some updates. I have made some changes to it. Because I found some things where some things were decent, some things worked well, and some things were not as great. So if you've been living on the rock and haven't been seeing the green reveal or all the set sixteen reveals for this week, then well, yeah, so far this week and from last week. So we have the green bearus leader. It has a permanent where you start the game with four life. As I said, that is ref in reference in the anime when Beerus brought in four fighters because Blue failed the test to. Uh, qualify for the event, and then it's going to activate main where you switch this card to rest mode. You draw one card, and additionally, if you have no battle cards in play, you choose up to one green universe 7 card with an energy cost of 2 or less in your hand to play it. So you get to draw a card and free play, and you don't have to interact with your opponents, so that's very good. And the way I'm kind of taking it, we're going to see, I feel, benefits from that, because you don't have to interact with your opponents at so, all. And being 50k means it's uh, your opponent, like in the, in the beginning, your opponent's going to have to combo up to do the push through damage and stuff like that. Well, especially with the leader. And it's awaken is when your life is a free or less, so you just need to take one damage to fulfill that. You may draw two cards, switch up to one of your energy act mode and flip this card over. So it's the same kind of like the Bojack and Sin Awakening, which is nice. So you draw two, untap one. And as I said, you only need to take one life to then fulfill that condition and that's easy enough. And that's uh and it's not too bothered because when you do awaken, you then are a 20k leader, Beerus Victory at all costs. And now he has two autos. So now, in order to get the draw, you have to fulfill this auto. When it's got attacks and plows, you draw a card. And then the same thing with additionally, if you have zero battle cards in play, you can choose up to one green universe 7 card with energy cost of two or less and play it. So same effect on the um, unawakened side, but now you attack to get that effect. So that's pretty cool. So now Beerus, so once you awaken, Beerus then joins the fight. He does also have a never auto, which is not as beneficial, but if it can come up, it can come up and might maybe help. It is once per turn, spirit boost one. Spirit boost meaning you have to take a marker off your unison to fulfill this. When one of your battle cards attacks and KOs an opponent's battle card, your opponent chooses one card in the hand and discards it. So a little bit of hand destruction go with that, and it's going to help. And that is also sizing with what the basically theme for the deck is. So if we go into the cards of the deck. First thing is one thing that makes it really interesting to me is a fill card specifically for the deck. So what the fill card does is a one cost barrier filled. So it's got that protection from um, the filled hate, which is quite nice. And it's got three effects. First one is an auto where once per turn, if you lead a card as a green beer or green champa card, at the end of a battle where one of your green battle cards attacks and KOs an opponent's battle card, place that card in this card from your opponent's drop area. Now this is pretty cool, so me, but and it's quite easy to fulfill. Like as far as far as what's been said on the Facebook group, and we need to wait until official rulings to find out exactly how this is fulfilled. But uh, so far, the the opinion is that um, as long as a green battle card attacks 
and KOs it. it could be by battle or by effect as long as that green as long as the green card green battle card that is attacking KOs the card by battle or by one of its own skills you fulfill this condition so it makes one of the an old card quite useful in doing that quite easy to fulfill and it's gonna be a very and it, it is if it does feel like a very nice little engine for the deck and that, that fulfilled the active main which we'll go over in a sec but it's also got an Alter, where if your leader card is green Beerus or green champion card and you switch this card to rest mode when one of your opponent when your when your opponent attacks just with anything you choose one of your green battle cards in rest mode with the same universe trait as your leader so universe 7 and switch this and switch the attack target to that card so well switch the target of the attack to that card so that's quite nice how you got like a, a kind of way to switch an attack off like almost like an negate like a block as well so all you gotta do is have a universe seven in rest mode, and you can just go opponent attacks, switch to the rest, and go you attacking this instead, which is very handy. And then the activate main, which makes the first alter relevant, is if there are five cards owned by your opponent on this card, you win the game. So as an alt win condition, there's not many of those, and most alt win conditions in this game are very hard to fill. They've got like a very hefty cost, as we've seen. Like this, there's a Masu. Well, there's technique. There's the Beerus that needs to tap 16 energy to do it. There is also the Uro, which needs a certain amount of cards under its field, which is, I think, it's quite a few. And it's not the easiest way to do it. And then we've got kind of things like um, the Gogeta 10, Blue Gogeta BR 10 card, which can, um, is not really a, a win condition, but can then choose bottom deck for life. Same with it as a massive lead, which when you put a certain energy total, you can bottom deck for life, or drop for life. So there's one of those rare alt win conditions and it seems a bit more, a bit easier to pull off and i didn't pull it off yesterday uh spoiler but it was quite it is a interesting alternative win condition to have with the leader so you don't have to go for damage you can go for that if you want if you want and we're only playing one because once you get one out you don't really you're not going to lose it especially without a barrier there's only a few things that can get rid of it and you don't really have to worry about that and it's just an alt win condition it's not the main win condition but then we also have a way to play it straight from the deck, which is our unison of choice, which is we pre-fight preparations. So this is a one cost, one specified cost unison, green, 9k power, and has a few skills and only one mark skill. It also has the new empower skill, which is a empower green free, where if this card replaces a unit green unison in play, or as it enters play, it carries it carries over up to three of its markers onto itself. And it's also got an auto limit one. Limit one meaning you can only activate this skill across all copies of the cards once per turn. If this card is free on the markers, that's the, that's the requirement. When this card is played, your opponent chooses one card in hand and discards it. So yeah, uh, we're playing this over the what's it called, the Migra Unison because the Migra's benefit is that it can protect itself by taking life to keep the markers on it, so you still ha you keep the markers and keep it alive. But since you start for four life, that's not beneficial for this deck. You're gonna, and it's being weaker than your leader and very easy to attack into with anything. Is just gonna die quickly. So we thought rather than have that to have something survive and have a unison coming later, we want something that gets out the nameless planet and then just sits there. And if they get rid of it, they get rid of it. We don't care. But if they don't get rid of it, then uh, we can then replace it with later uh, new ones later on to make them discard one once per turn. And it's a uh, the way it plays the field card is by its marker skill, which is a plus one. Activate main. If a field extra card isn't in play in your battle area, activate up to one nameless planet from your deck that shuffle your deck. So normally when you're playing this, you want to play this turn one, like charge an energy, play this turn one, use this marker skill, play the nameless planet, then you've got two markers ready to use for as a charismatic villain if you need be, and also have your field on the, effect, on the board, and then use your leader's effect, because then you're not going to have that instance of potentially drawing the nameless planet if you've already drawn it. And if you already draw the nameless planet in your well, if you mulligan, if you see it in your opening hand, you mulligan it back. If you didn't draw it again or draw it after the mulligan, then you just play the nameless planet and charge the unison. That is it for the uh, main ways to get the field card. And we've got the the universe seven like chain in a sense. We have the new Piccolo two battle universe six. This is a two cost five k um, universe seven green card. So that's relevant because you can play off the leader for free. It has two permanents, rest one being that during your turn it becomes a 15k that can attack battle cards in active mode as long as you don't have a barrier. And it's ever permanent is if your opponent has no battle cards in play, it gains critical. So a good thing about that is if your opponent has no battle cards in play, 
You swing an early there for 15k crit. It's your, your turn, your turn. But if uh, your opponent does have a battle card, as long as it doesn't have barra, you can tack into it. And if you tack into it and KO their battle card, it goes on the nameless planet and goes towards your win condition of five cards under it. So either way, you're not really losing out on this. You're getting you're gaining a lot from that, which is really good. But then if it does get removed, well, if it does get KO'd, it's got an altar where if, by paying one green, when this card is KO'd, you draw one card, then choose it to one green universe seven card with an energy cost of three in your hand and play it. Now you might be wondering which target you're going to go for that. Well, the target I'm going to go for that is Piccolo the Cunning Strategist. So this is one from years ago, back in the power booster, back when we had that one little weird booster, the power up decks, because they, they didn't bother putting in TPs or put in the main set, the power ups and the arch types. And this is Piccolo Cunning Strategist. It's, yeah, as, as it, the requirement meets for Piccolo to battle Universe 6, is it's a three cost green. Universe 7 card, got the same, they've all, it's got the same uh, traits as the 2 cost, 15k as well, and it's got an auto burst free, which means you have to put the top top 3 cards of your deck in your drop area, on the top of your deck in your drop area, to activate this skill. And it's when you play this card from your hand, choose up to 1 Namekian or Universe 7 card in your hand with, with original energy cost of 4 or less, we've got quite a few targets for this, negate your skills for duration of the turn and play it. Most of the time you're going to be playing that during your opponent's turn because you're going to be attacking with your Piccolo. If they don't attack your Piccolo and attack anything else, you just go Nameless Planet, make them attack Piccolo, like force them, like just go, you're attacking this now. And then drop this for, by paying one green, also replacing itself by drawing a card as well. And then making this Piccolo play something that's uh, bigger for free. And the targets we do have for this is like the really old Piccolo Assimilated Ability, one of the one of the cards, a card that was one of the best cards in a format like a while ago, being the fact that it's a 4k, a 4 cost 20k with barrier, which means if you're playing the mirror match or against a champer, they can't attack into this if you keep some rest in uh, active mode because it has barrier. And this one has an activate battle where once per turn for bond 2, so meaning, meaning as long as you've got never battle card in play and you battle it, you can trigger this effect. You choose one of your opponent's battle cards with energy cost of five or less and KO it. And if you did KO a card, you draw the card. So remember, if you KO, you can't KO tokens with this because tokens don't have cost. And if you don't KO a card with this skill, you don't get the draw. But this is really nice to keep your hand um, nice, and, nice and healthy by drawing cards with this. And a really good way to, to trigger the Nameless Planet as well because you can attack with this and then KO a battle card. And that fulfills the conditions to uh, put it under Nameless Planet. At, well, that's that's how it's uh, considered at the moment. But that's one of our targets. We play forward that because the good thing is it's not like one of those old cards where it's got a one one cost ten k combo power. It has just a five k combo power, which means you don't use much energy in this. So you can use it for your other cards, which we're going to see in a bit. And another target we have for it is SSB Kaioken Son Goku Might's Calling, a new one from the set as well in SR. So this one is a four. They're, they're both just like Piccolo. It's a four cost twenty k. And it's got double strike, and it's got two auto skills. So the first one is another way to play it easily enough, which is auto limit one for one green energy as a cost. If your leader card is green and this card is in your combo er combo era, when one of your green battle cards attacks and KOs an opponent's battle card, K play this card from your combo era, so you can combo them for one energy. And once again, that's really easy to pull off with the Piccolo, which is cool. And then we have the other also, which is very beneficial as well, which helps trigger names planet and also if they don't have anything for do that you can do something else which is when this card attacks you choose one or two effects you ever choose one of your opponent's battle cards and KO it helps fulfill the names planet but if you can't fulfill that you can choose the other effect which your opponent chooses one card in the hand and discards it so either a bit of hand destruction or a way to put something on the names planet your your option your choice so either way that's really really good and once again being a never zero cost 5k combo so it's not a dead combo card in your hand now that is the main two targets you're going to bring out from the Piccolo, and Piccolo Cunning Strategist is going to be one of the cards that you always try to grab because it's the one that's not searchable. Right? You've got seven targets to bring out from Piccolo, but only four Piccolos, and this the two drop Piccolo is going to be easily searchable as we'll see in a bit. So for some of the other stuff we got in the deck, we've got Super Combo Choice. I've uh, I changed to being Doctor Jero Pro Progenitor of Terror. Now this is what I've gone for. Now I haven't tested this yet, but this is now. Changed my theory of the deck and how I think I'm going to play it. I was playing Helles, but Helles 
like it's a zero cost 10k which uh what was it zero cost zero combo cost because it gains the 10k from the its skill and it has to discard a card from your hand to um for the effect to draw which means the best target for that is probably Rubrian, but if you don't have a Rubrian in your hand, you have to discuss something that could be beneficial. Which isn't always great, and Jerome does the same thing as Celeste does, minus the draw, but puts uh, Rubrian in your drop, straight from your deck, rather than have to have it in your hand. And also, in the essence of Fu, Fu Shrouded, which I did experience yesterday, it's actually got 10k combo where Celeste doesn't. Because the effect of this is if your leader card is green or yellow, when you combo with it, combo with this card, you choose up to one green or yellow battle card in with entry cost of four or less from your deck and place in your drop area initial for your deck. So straight away combo and put a rubber round for your deck. And a good extra addition to this, of why we play this, is for Krillin and Android 18, Power Couple. So this is a, a rival choice for the deck, being a, only one green for green, uh, green yellow rival. So you just combo to row. Put the Ribbon on the drop, and you can play this for one energy. So, a very nice defensive play. And it's, ex it's extra good because the fact is also tied for Piccolo cutting strategies if you want to. It won't get any beneficial effects on board, but it can be a choice if you want to. And the nice thing about his alt arriving in is his auto, where when you play this card, you choose one or two effects which could be beneficial depending on the situation. So, you can either do the first one, which is what you're most likely going to do, where your opponent chooses one card in the hand and place in the drop error. So, more discard. We're going to go a bit of his discard. That's kind of green, one of green's things. Or you can choose up to a keyword skill on one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and negate, his, negate it for the duration of the turn. So, that's really nice being able to um, turn off a strike skill from your opponent or critical um, from your opponent's uh, battle card, which is pretty cool. So, if your opponent's swinging with something big and they're going for a big, like, Double, triple strike, quad strike swing. You just come with Jero, put your Ribrian in the drop, arrival this in, and just go that skills and get it on that battle card for the turn. So you don't have to worry about the strike skill, it becomes one damage. And we play three because we do want to have it in, but we don't want a four or four plate. You can reduce it down to two if you want, but make room for more tech cards if you want. But personally, in my opinion, um, I reckon this is a very good. I need to test it still, but this is what I feel is going to be useful for me. The next cards we have is standard green hand, uh, hand destruction stuff. So Ribrian, target for Jerobe. It's basically just hit one drop, pay two green, warp it from your drop, and make your opponent discard two. Standard four, mostly using every, almost every green deck. And then go extra with that. Free Rosie being a, um, just like Ribrian, but instead you have to, you play it from your hand, has to flex so it's not being stopped. Because um, your leader's green is going to make your opponent discard two, and then he gains triple attack, which is really helpful when you're dealing with unisons, as I um, as it was really helpful yesterday dealing with people's unisons. And um, the next card we have, that they don't have to go over much about these uh, Ruby and Rosie because they're quite generic and used in mostly every green deck, especially if you've been watching the meta and playing Cell, you can see how strong they are. Then we've got two charismatic villain, so we're only playing two because our unison isn't as a uh, Sticky as most green ones, so if it, if it get, and also if it gets attacked into, we don't care. But if it get if it stays there and you have charismatic, you can get the benefit of that. And then we're playing two charismatic because, as we said, it's not as often. It's not going to be as easy as most as normal with most decks to have a a unison with two markers in play. And then the next card we have is our secret rare choice, being Majin Buu Kabuto Kai Absorbed. This, in my opinion, is probably the best of the green secret rares at the moment. Right, I would say this, then Ape, then the um, the Ever Boo secret rare. Because this can, it's got the auto where if you do have a unison, uh, well, it does have the beneficial effect of being played just for two energy at any point. As long as you've got two energy open being played for two, either during your opponent's turn or during your turn. So you can either have it as a way to. Um, floodgate your opponent like as a nice floodgate to stop your opponent from attacking all battle cards for the turn by playing your opponent's turn. Because most people swing with the leader first, unless you're against yellow, then you're like, mm. well, most people play swing with the leader first to get that draw. So it's nice when your opponent swings the leader, drop this, and then a battle card swings and turn off for the turn. And it's very hard to stop this from coming into play without its effects going off. And it's only activate battle as well, so it's going to be very hard. You're not going to stop the effect to stop battle cards from being attacked. 
And in your turn, you can just play it for two if you want to get that fifth card on Names Planet. Play it for two and swing your opponent's battle card if it's in rest mode with a big 40k green battle card for two energy. It's very nice to finish the game. And it's also got a beneficial auto of where if your lead, if your unison does survive, I'm playing Spirit Boost 2. When this card is played from your hand, choose one of your opponent's unison cards and steal it. So you got a nice uh, unison steal if you need be. And you can even play play unison. Plus one it just to get out of market, then swing. Or just then play the uh play it for two to steal their unison straight away. It's a very a very good card. And yeah, it's going to be most beneficial for one for any green deck, in my opinion. If, if you've got this, play it. If you don't, if you have one of the other ones like Ape or anything, you can play. It. Uh, you can play the Ape, but I don't feel like the um, well, either the other secret rares can be played. But I feel like it goes. This one will be more beneficial than Ape and then the um, the ever boo. And then the last battle card in the deck is Two Toa Dark T uh, Dark, T Dark Temptation Toa. Sorry. And this is just an overrun free, 15k as well, uh, with an auto when you can play as using overrun. If your leader card's green or yellow, choose your leader card, give it 5k power. So when you're awakened and can attack, you're a 25k swing with your lead, which is pretty cool. That's the best place to get your um, any attack to at the minimum. If you're trying to push for damage, make your opponent waste resources. And then it, your opponent chooses one card in hand to discard it. So I feel that's more beneficial for a green deck. Make you, like We're trying to get your opponent to discard, whittle down their hand low. So when you're taking the battle cards, they've got less combo power to save that battle card so you can take on your nameless planet. Because you're not really going, trying to go for life. You're trying to go for that up one condition. But if, if it comes to a point where you can attack your opponent's leader to kill them by life, this is beneficial. Like attacking to a leader, make him take a life, play this, make him drop that card they just took, and then swing you get a 15k swing. It's very good. And only two, because we only really need two. You can put more if you want, like take down the power couple to put in a third one. But it could kind of clog, because you um, you do have sometimes those hands where they do clog. But it's up to you, you can make changes however you want. And then with the extra cards, a way to make it so you can see that pick, that two drop piccolo more often is playing four assimilate. So this makes it so you're, it's technically, you're almost playing eight copies, because it's a pseudo copy of the piccolo. Because it's just a zero cost, activate main, choose up to one of your green or yellow and meching cards with energy cost of two or less from your deck, add to your hand and shuffle your deck afterwards. So if you have, you want, if you're mulliganing, you want mulligan back any piccolos if you find it in assimilate, just to, so you can use assimilate to deck fin and uh, get that piccolo from your deck, which is nice. And it just means that you're almost always going to have a piccolo play off your leader when you need it. Simple as. And we play four copies of it because we want to see as many. We want to make sure we get this piccolo to start the chain. And then we have four Earths cell destroying Kamehameha. So once again, you want to make sure that when you're attacking a battle card, you push it through. And cell's a really good card because you're going to be charging green. And it means that when you're attacking your opponent, you're putting an 15, extra 15k on your uh, attack, which is really good for one energy. And also ripping a card from hand and it being random and you getting the pick. Which means your opponent just doesn't get to choose what they want to discard, choosing a card that's dead in their hand. You could rip anything out of their hand. Like I've when I was playing yesterday, I was ripping things like Ever Sell this uh, Earth Destroying Kamehameha out of their hand, ripping out super combos, things like that. It's just the fact you can choose which card you take out of their hand is amazing. And it's really nice defense as well defend because if you're at four life, you might your opponent might get aggressive and you've got this just to go. Very big out combo, and then this will make him uh, lose even more hand. And then the last card of the deck is free Homicidal Clone. So the reason we play free is because you can only play this three times free off your leader because your leader only starts off for four life. And this is a really nice one because it is good early game so you can wake him whenever you want really by just uh, you put attacking once. And you play this and this is nice to help protect your units if you need be or protect your battle cards in the mirror or even protect your piccolo assimilated ability if you attack with it to try and get that um, pop and add to the nameless planet because its effect is leader cards mono green which it is and you get the attack and then play a meta token the meta token is a 5k power zero cost 5k combo and also has blocker for that turn so that means during the turn you can then block another attack afterwards or if it survives you've got as a nice 5k combo to use on that attack and it can be played for free by its permanent if you've got five or less life you can take a life instead of playing it, paying its cost, which, as I said, being at four life is live straight off the bat. 
and that is basically a deck. That is what I've um. I, it's not the same when I was testing. I was testing instead of um, instead of the Jero, I was playing four less, which wasn't always the greatest. And I was playing three charismatic, and two of the universe six hit from the same set, but I took them out to put in the Criden and Android eighteen power couple because I thought that went really well with the Doctor Jero for the attack. That's the list. If you want to give it a try, feel free to give it a try. You can go on the the uh, deck prof the link to the actual deck prof on DBS Deck Planet. Shout out to them as well for being the best uh, deck building website in the game. If you want to try it on Untap, go down, get the link, import it straight onto you, Untap. Or if you want to build this when it comes out, or even try it. Print off proxies as one of my subscribers. Shout out to you, Peter Dance. To uh, test it in real life if you don't like playing on Untap and online, because Untap's not always the best, as I experienced yesterday. But once again, thank you for watching. Feel free to like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below if there's anything you want to watch or anything, uh, any questions you have about the deck that I might not have covered or any changes you feel you make. It's nice to have a bit of discussion. And lastly, feel free to subscribe. It keeps you updated with videos as and when I drop them on my channel. Helps me get to my goal of 1,000 subs from a quarter of the way there. And also, I really appreciate it because it really helps. And it's just uh, a nice thing to do. But once again, thank you for watching. And see you in the next video. Bye for now.